Mr. Smith, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, bro. Uh, we are VintageBreaks.com, okay. and we have a lot of fun opening up anything from old football cards, right. such as, for example, this 1977 Topps football pack, which we're going to open in just a few minutes. Okay. What's really cool in here is we could potentially get um, a second-year Walter Payton card. Now, that would be nice. That would be really sweet. Um, so, um, I'm not sure, I know you know a little bit about authentication, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes, okay. our Prova. Um, and your team. However, I wanted to ask you, do you know anything about card grading? Have you ever heard of that? Graded cards? I have heard of grading cards uh, through Beckett Publications sure. back in my day. Okay. Beckett Publications used to do a whole lot of grading of cards. Sure. And I do know that there's a 10. And 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 so, so you kind of get it a little bit. Yeah, I get it a little bit, but how you get to a 10 and what this makes it mint condition and all those kind of things. Sure. So Should a person autograph it or not autograph well, it? It's, and it's all kind of interesting. Of so 20 years ago, 30 right, years right, ago, right. Right. If you would have brought like your prize card that your dad gave you, mm -hmm. like a Joe Willie rookie, right, or a Jim Brown rookie, and you would have said, Dad, hey, look, I went to the card show and I got a sign, your dad would have been like, what are you talking about, son? Right. How could you possibly do that? You just ruined the card. Right. So fast forward to today, and the number one card that you could have got signed 20, 30 years ago, Mickey Mantle cards you used to be able to go to the shows in the late 80s and early 90s, right. and you could pay him $15. $25, and when it started to go to $50 and $75, people got really crazy about it. They got upset. So for those who had some foresight and thought about getting his 1951 Bowman rookie card signed, or his 1952 Topps rookie card signed, which, which back then, right. no one did that. Right, no right. one. It was, right, it was, right. Believe me, a big faux pas. Well, today, those cards are selling for like huge multiples. So I'm not suggesting that this huge, is right. Huge multiples in terms of in terms of what it would have sold for if it was not signed. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. So, for example, great, great question. So, for example, um, a Mickey Mantle 51 Bowman, let's say in the condition of a 2 out of a 10. Right. Let's say it's $4,000, right? 4000 But let's say it was signed by Mickey, who's been dead now for a number of years. Right. What do you think that's worth? A bunch more. If you say multiples, then we, obviously we're talking in multiples. 20000 maybe 25000 Okay. And if okay. it was a really nice card, it could be worth fifty grand. Wow. Whereas if it wasn't signed, it'd be worth a lot less. Got it. So um, it's pretty incredible uh, what the, um, the scale does for grading. So to give you some perspective, if we get a Walter Payton, if we're fortunate enough to get a Walter Payton second year out of here, okay. and then we got it graded by our friends at PSA, because that's who we do business with, okay. um, you potentially could have that card sell for $7,000. Okay. Uh, that's just his second year. Now, we don't have any 1976 football in stock. But that's his rookie year. So this pack here has never been open. Never been open since 1977. Really? Uh huh. And how you get your hands on it? Well, that's the secret behind you know the sauce and all the good stuff. So right. you can why talk about it, it off camera. Why did, okay. Why does it have to be a secret? Well, so <laughs> so there's some great deal. It's a great question. So there's some great dealers across the country, such as Steve Hart from Baseball Card Exchange okay, okay. and other reputable folks like that, where you Got can it. buy your inventory. But um, and as I joke all the time, for example, uh, about um, my lovely sister and her husband who are in the liquor store business. Is the bubble gum still in here? If you want to eat it, you can. No, but, no, um, no, no, no. So have you ever heard of Gary Gary Vaynerchuk? Yeah. So he's an entrepreneur, and we actually just got together. He's a buddy of mine. We got together the other day on Wednesday to open some packs. Okay. No exaggeration. Now, he's a hoops guy. We open up a pack from 1972 Topps Basketball. We could potentially get a Dr. J rookie. He opens the pack with me. He's having a great time. Looks at the gum, like real funky. He chews the gum, and then he swallows the gum and announces it exactly. Announces it on camera, and I'm thinking, I just want him to make it to the end of the episode. Obviously, of course, <laughs> I hope he stays you know, alive afterwards right, for right, a long right, time, right, but right, right. I was really concerned about having him get up and, and end the episode. So. Um, if you want to eat the gum, I'll no, save it for you afterwards. No, no, dessert no, for no, you. no, no. We, no. Make, we make that clear right now. All right, great. No gum, gum for Emmett. <laughs> um, but it'd be interesting to see it. Though, Absolutely. It? So um, before uh, we move forward, uh, I thought this would be a kind of a cool treat. Um, I bought this on the floor of the show here from our friends at CSA. Okay. And of course, Prova, who we're going to be talking about in a few minutes. Um, this is just an unsigned jersey. I'd like you to choose one of the young fans that you have in the crowd and simply just give it to them as a gift oh. from uh, on behalf of you, Mr. Smith, okay. and of course, Vintage Breaks. Okay. Um, we're going to give that uh, out to the one of the lucky kids, if you could. Yeah, let me go ahead and put my autograph. Oh, well, that's it, extremely generous of you. First. That's extremely generous of you. Even though it's not Prova tag. No, it's not. It won't but be done that way. So well, that's extremely generous of you. Don't Thank try you, to retail it. All right, no retailing, but someone might get very lucky right now, folks. I might keep it for myself. All right, all right. <laughs> all right. Um, so, uh, who do you think is deserving of this uh, this jersey in the crowd? There's only one person, one young person sitting right in front of me. It's, I got a male and a female. I got a 21. Oh, so you just disappointed me. 22. Oh, wow. That's great. 21 to 22. Wow. <laughs>
That's very cool, man. 21 and 22. I, I give you something else. We'll find something else for we'll you. Find, huh? Listen, All right. Listen, that was cool. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm looking at Zeke and Elliot. So I figured, why not go to 22? <laughs> That was awesome. And she don't even have a jersey. <laughs> this is it. That was really cool. Cool. So I actually have an extra rookie card. Yeah. If you want to do that. Got it. Got it. Awesome. Okay. All right, great. So let's get down to business because now your time's extremely valuable. Let's do this. All right. So this is the 1977 Tops football pack. This is pack number 28. So this is what's really crazy. We keep track of how many we've opened. Okay. So we've already opened 27 of these before. 27? Uh-huh. And we've been doing this for a year and a half. Now I'm going to tell you a 10-second story to try to talk even faster than I'm talking now. We opened up a pack last year, National Sports Collectors Convention, the biggest what? show out of all the shows in the United States. The one in Chicago. Uh, yes, this year will be in Chicago. We opened up a pack from 1955, Bowman baseball cards. Okay. I don't know if you heard about okay. this. Okay. We pulled a Mickey Mantle, card number 19 out of 20 in the pack. So we thought we were like, well, oh, out, down and out. Like, you know, you're 4-11, and 11, you're not making the playoffs, you're definitely done. What? Yeah, that's what we thought. We're 19th card, definitely no Mantle, we're screwed. Mantle comes, I erupt. I mean, I'm I, like, I shatter eardrums in the room. Um, I get my buddy Darren Ravel, he used to work for ESPN. Okay. He spreads the word. We get picked up by um, uh, uh, USA Today, right. uh, Washington Post did an interview. So it turns out the gentleman who bought a spot in that break, he paid $500. Everyone paid $500 to be in that break, 20 spots, so 10 grand. It took us a year to sell the pack. So it's not like it sold like, you know, uh, you know, hotcakes or anything. Right, right, right. So 500 bucks, we pull the mantle, we get it graded at the convention. The next day, 24 hours later, we get the card back. It grades a nine out of a 10. We have an offer on the table, and we haven't tried to offer it publicly to anyone. $55,000. Uh -huh. Get out of here. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Really? I made national news. It's unbelievable. So I want to make sure you understand the context 000. of what Oh, yeah. OK, let's do this. All right, great. So now we're excited. Let's get that Walter Payton. All right, great. Second year card. Let's do it. Eric, Sinsala, you have spot one. Now, once again, you have any change of heart or your team, we're going to put that right over there. Yeah. This is the gum from 77. 1977? Yeah. What's really crazy is Mikey. And it's still in mint condition. <laughs> it looks like, it looks like 42 You don't want to eat it. Mikey, who's our lead breaker and is fantastic, he actually keeps an archive. Now, don't judge him. He keeps an archive of gum, and he calls, he does a contest. Like, every night we go live, and he calls it Guess That Gum. Now, he doesn't eat it. He'll put it on camera. He talks about the mold and all funky stuff. We're not going to get into that. Um, but basically, he'll give away a break credit if you can uh, to vintagebreaks.com if you can guess what year that disgusting gum is from. So we already know 77, but he'll get upset if we throw that out, actually. Yeah, or I if will. you eat it. So we I will. All right, so Isaac Curtis is spot one. That is going to Isaac Eric. Curtis. Yep. Now, I don't know anything about Isaac Curtis. You Me can either. speak up at any time. Uh, I know this isn't your time period, um, but what we have from your time period planned for afterwards is Mr. Smith and I are going to be opening up this 1990 score supplemental factory oh. set, which is guaranteed to have your rookie. We've already drawn who's getting it, and that's the card that we're going to sign on camera. And then I'd like to talk about Prova, the authentication process, okay. and more importantly, the technology, how cool that is. Yeah, 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 right, yeah, yeah. So let's get down to that. This is Dave Green. Oh, okay. So if we get a Walter Payton, now I know you're going to say like Dave Green, who the hell is that, right? So Dave Green, I don't know who that is. However, if we get a Walter Payton that is beautifully centered like that, that's really sharp corners, we would have a legit chance at a PSA 10. Okay. And then I might jump out of my seat. All right. All right. So uh, spot number three is Greg Landry. That's going out to Camillo, who's a regular of ours. How you know who's it going out to? So in the upper okay, left, see, we have our it, list. So this is our platform. We do a show a few times a week live on youtube.com slash vintage breaks. So for example, to give you some perspective, we have 70 people on this platform. We have people on Facebook watching us. Thanks to Rich Miller from Sports Collectors Daily, we probably have how many? 62 people, so probably okay. hundreds of people watching live and of course the floor of the uh, of the show. So this is Greg Landry. Yeah, if we had more time, I would explain to you the process in detail, but trying to keep things kind of... Is that Randy Witt? No, that's no. the Jets. Yeah. So unfortunately, okay, yeah. and I love the Jets looking forward, but backward, I'm a Jet fan, I've been tortured. I wish I liked the Cowboys. You guys won Super Bowls when I was alive as a kid, and I just didn't like them. My dad, he just directed me the wrong way. You know, sometimes fathers steer their kids in the wrong direction. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Great. Spot number five is coming up. This is Art Kuhn. I've not heard of Art. So what's really interesting, Mr. Smith, is that folks actually collect the entire set of 1977 Topps football cards, but in graded condition. Okay. They go for big money. So I guarantee you, like, if you had a PSA 10 set from 77 Topps football, every card PSA 10, tens of thousands of dollars. I get it. 
And then at PSACorner.com. I can't wait to get the mine. All right, all right. I guess I guess, uh, yeah. Oh, here we go. Former Cowboy. Okay. Maybe, you know what? Johnny Five said we should have started off with your set. And who am I to say I overruled the Cowboys fan? Um, there's more Cowboy fans in my office, my small office, than there are Jet fans. That's crazy. Good for you guys, bad for the Jets. And we're in New Jersey, too, which is crazy. All right, Mel Gray. Okay. He's a good ball player. Yeah, yeah. All right, we got a few more chances to end it, but remember, don't give up. We pulled Mantle next to last, so we don't know. Oh, Hall of Famer, Cor Eller. He was yeah, a bad man. Yeah, yeah. He was a bad man. <laughs> Tony Green. Yeah. That's going out to spot eight, Jim Chu. So Carl Eller's our first Hall of Famer in the pack. Awesome, awesome. Very cool. Oh, yeah. So you see, very sharp, but just maybe a smidgy off center left to right. Got it. So, you know, they didn't exactly have the highest. Uh, um, uh, you know, the highest form of standards back then. All right, Terry Schmidt is the last card, is a former bear. Card uh, yeah. number 10. Now we're going to get to the good stuff. All right, Emmett is ready to go. Now, can we do that on camera somehow? Uh, possible. There we go. Great. Possible we can keep that so the folks can One see. Second. All right. I gotta, awesome. Got to get my hand into the plastic. Yeah, yeah. great. This is so cool. Now we talk. So we're simply looking for your rookie card, but you're going to see some of the guys you definitely remember from back then. Some of the Jet Bus. Yeah. Oh, really? Blair Thomas. Uh, oh, oh, God. Why are we going there? I'm not trying. <laughs> Listen, I love Blair Thomas. I'm sure the person's a fantastic human being. What did he do for the Jets franchise? Unfortunately, set us back years. We'll talk about that on the next episode. All right, there you go. All right, so I want you to take half. I'm going to take half. Let's try to find your rookie. My rookie. Yes, sir. Have you ever done this before, by never the way? Never done this. Wait, before. you've never opened your own 1994 set and pulled never. your rookie card. I got a gang of cards sitting in the storage unit right now. Well, you should do that afterwards. You know what your PSA 10 goes for? Like 400. No. Really? Yeah. Oh, we're also buying those sets. So you know, if you decide you don't want them anymore, we'll, we'll take them off your hands. So I'm gonna try to show them on camera. Ken Willis. Jeff George. Oh, didn't Jeff George have a cannon? Yeah, he did. Strong arm. Johnny Bailey. Harold Green. Mark Carrier, my rookie of the year. Remember him? C counterpart. Yes. Alonzo Highsmith. I don't think you're going to have an Emma Smith in here. Well, if we don't, we've got a big problem. <laughs> I don't think he's in my stack. Steve I think he's in Rizar. yours. It'll probably be the next to last card, right? Could be. Well, I hope Dexter so. Dexter Carter. Reggie Cobb. Oh. Emmett Smith. Hey, all right. All right. Hey. Now let's check out the centering. Oh, wow. So that's really nice. So um, left to right, really nice. Okay. Top to bottom, not quite perfect, but almost perfect. Uh -huh. That's great. There you go. Very cool. So, John, where do you want him uh, to sign it so that everyone can see? Let's move all the cards over here. Except for yours. John, where do you want him to put it? Right here? Oh, great. He wants to, you to put it there so everyone can see it. Awesome. This is great. And who won this, John? It's right there from top. Congratulations to Nick Lubrick. He uh, not only won your Emmett Smith rookie card directly pulled by you, which is fascinating because you actually pulled it from the box, but yep. you signed it for us also. Yeah. That's really cool. Do you want me to help you? Yeah, I'm going to let you do that. Right, I don't right. want right. to mess it up. I don't want to mess it up. Very cool. It's too much pressure. Too much pressure. You know We're going to let it dry for yeah. a minute. I don't want to smudge. We're going to put it over here. You're going to be the security. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. Right. I can do it. So, do you recognize any of the guys? Uh, that we were going through from that particular year, your rookie year, you came up with. Like, you know, did you become friends with any of them yeah, during Mark the draft? Carrier, Mark Carey and I was rookie of the year together. Uh, Lonzo Highsmith, obviously, was my fullback for my rookie year. Sure. Came in uh, from, uh, I think it was Houston. And uh, I'll never forget this one game against the Washington Redskins. Man, he hit somebody so hard, I heard the guy yell, ow, in the middle of the run. I was like, what in the world was that? So, but yeah, there's a lot of names that I remember. Blast from the past, Reggie Cobb. Reggie Cobb was good yeah, for a couple University of years, right? University of Tennessee. I mean, what was Aikman like as a rookie? Because at that point, what you were uh, we, we, actually no, you were he was a year before you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was awesome. I mean, seven, that's great. He went seven and nine my rookie year, and so to see 
uh, the Cowboys make that turn from one and fifteen to seven and nine was awesome. I mean, we started to gel and believe in each other at that point in time. That's really cool to hear. Yeah, well, one of the yeah. things I did want to ask you, if we had a moment, um, is uh, candidly for me, as I've been involved opening some packs now with athletes the last few months. Pete Rose, the great Tony Dorsett, of course yourself, we're privileged to do that. Uh, we actually opened a pack with uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat just a few hours ago. Really? So that was really uh, fun. But what I'm noticing is uh, the common theme behind all the athletes is there's such hard work that it takes to get where you get today. Right. And, you know, whether it be you have just a word of wisdom or a bit of wisdom that someone shared with you as a mentor to you or you want to give a shout out to someone, I'm curious if you have something to share to a lot of the f young fans that are watching both live here on youtube.com slash vintage breaks or some of the kids watching the audience. I would just say that, um, I mean, a lot of people see where we are right now and they think that we grew up this way and grew up in this life of privilege when we haven't had that type of experience. And I think every athlete that's come from meager beginnings have worked and forged their body, their mind, and their soul. And have learned very valuable lessons along the way. Lessons that have sustained them to this point and maybe carried them on to the rest of their lives. And so for me, um, there's no substitution for hard work. No substitution for putting the extra hour or the extra time to get better. No substitution actually um, being able to become your own man and learn how to stand on, the own, on your own island by yourself and not follow the crowd. Uh, you have to do things that others are not willing to do in order to achieve your own level of greatness because when you follow the crowd, I mean, it's a lot of people following that same crowd. If you travel the road, less travel. You're forging, uh, you're going down a path that only a few people have gone down. And that few of people can re you can really relate to mm -hmm. and they can relate to you as well. And so it's not easy being in this position and having a large group of people that you can love and love being around sure. that can relate to where you are sure. and what you've been through and what you've experienced in life. And sometimes it makes life a little bit difficult because you're out there by yourself. Sure. But you obviously did it over a long period of time. And yeah. I wanted to give a shout out. I know, I don't think my son Crosby's watching, but he's only four. And I'm hoping to be able to show him some of these, you know, tapes. Uh, he loves YouTube, of course. Right, right. Even my though he's only four. My son loves YouTube. How old is your son? Eight. <laughs> All right. So we obviously both have the same problem to deal yeah. with. Um, so I, I hope that uh, Crosby, you're listening to Mr. Smith and all the other athletes that we get together with and realize that nothing happens overnight. You got to nope. work really hard to get you to where you get to. Be patient. Um, and of course, I want to lead to the last thing we're going to talk about today, right. which is probe authentication. And right. of course, that didn't happen overnight either. No. Nope. What I was surprised to learn about, I'll be honest, I thought when I heard about it over there, you know what? You started a year ago. Things are like up and running. Meanwhile, I'm talking to, oh, I forgot the gentleman's name. He's great. Um, Ron? Uh, Ron, yes. Right. He was telling me a little bit about it. You started a long time ago, but technology changed. Yeah, so started, please tell us a little bit about it. started a long time with the concept in terms of utilizing RFID technology. And RFID at the time was introduced uh, in the supply chain market to try and help alleviate shrinkage and, and so forth in the supply chain. Yes. And so seeing what RFID was being, how it's been utilized in the supply chain, um, I found a way to utilize it right down to the actual item. I love it. And so I, I want to make sure putting, we tell people. So I started putting RFID smart chips into my game use uniform in 2002, the year which I broke wow. the record. And so from that point on, that whole entire season, I had all of my jerseys tagged. I had all of my helmets tagged. And, and so forth. And then I, my last two years with the Arizona Cardinals, I did the same thing. So my last three years of football, Everything's so documented. all my jerseys have been archived, not necessarily archived, but been been identified in the context of uh, uh, having a smart tag in them and authenticated that way. So if I may, you were not only playing pro football, but you were actually an entrepreneur also. Yeah, I've always been an entrepreneur. But the thing that the thing That's that great. really uh, uh, drove me to this place is it's very simple. I mean, I got sick and tired of hearing my fans coming up to me and asking me, Emmett, is this jersey real? Is this helmet real? Did they take you, their hard-earned money. Did you sign this? And, and I'm like, how much did you pay for that? I paid 1000 I paid 500 I paid 600 Whatever they paid. And it's gone. I'm looking at that. that and I'm like saying, this is this is a shame. People are actually getting ripped off and, and getting taken advantage of. They work hard, 9 to 5, like anyone else. And they go out and they want to make an investment in some of their favorite athletes. And you guys, folks, unscrupulous people, sitting on the other side just taking advantage of that and not knowing what they're getting 
but trusting the individual on the other side, that's like going to a used car shop and say, yeah, this car is great until they came up with the Carfax. You see the Carfax, oh, you see it's everything. Changed. It's a whole new yeah, level. Yeah, yeah, a whole new level now. Well, let's, so, talk, let's talk about the new level because I thought it was unbelievable. So that's that's truly what Prove is doing right now, yes. trying to show people the Carfax, if you will, right. sure. by identifying the items. We, The way we go through our process, first of all, let me take a step back yeah. and show you the normal process. The normal process is you come in. To meet an athlete to get excited to show like in, this weekend. You get, like this weekend, yeah. you come in, you get your autograph ticket, you pay your money, mm -hmm. then you go get in line, you go up to the athlete, you get it signed, and afterwards you go over to one, two, three, or four different authenticators, and you get them to either authenticate the merchandise that they didn't even witness, right. or they didn't even see done, and you pay some money right. and to get it done. Right. That's the normal process. Mm -hmm. Well. What people fail to realize is anything can happen in between the time I get things signed and the time I get over there. People walking around with bags and stuff and everything else, it's easy to replace. Now these folks over here are just authenticating. They're giving their opinion. opinion. Not fact, opinion. Their opinion. It's important. Their fact. Yeah. It's important to understand there's a difference between opinion. Yeah. We have a saying in football, opinions are like bros, everybody got one. Everybody got one. And sure. buttholes do stink. Yeah. And yeah. so everybody can agree with that. Yeah, so at the end certainly. of the day, you can pay for somebody, some butthole to give you their opinion sure. if you want to, or you can have it done the way the Prova system is set up. Sure. The way the Prova system is set up is you come get your autograph ticket. Mm -hmm. You come to our booth. Mm -hmm. You show us your autograph ticket. Uh -huh. We know you're going to get a jersey, a helmet, or a flat item, and all those things. We know you're going to get it from a Troy Aikman or a Michael Irvin or Emma Smith mm -hmm. or a combination thereof. So we take your information, your consumer information, we put it into our system. We add the smart tag to your item. We tie that information to the smart tag. So now it's your item. Now No one else. No one knows this. And so then you take the, the COA that we have, which is a digital COA, link those two things together. Now you can go get in line, you wait on Michael Irvin or you wait on Emmett Smith or you wait on the combination thereof. Once you get up to me, like I was just signing this right here, you sign it, then once you get done, I either pull out my app or someone on the Prover team will be somewhere close by right there watching. Unbelievable. And, and then they come up to it, they scan it in, and it's right into the system. So you've taken out any chance of any ambiguity, Try to, any issue whatsoever in terms of you know it was just seen by a Prover representative yes. right there, and it was tagged with an RFID chip yeah. that we know that you yeah. cannot... I think uh, um, Ron was telling me you need a billion dollars to start... You need a billion uh, dollar chip to go ahead and try to oh, that's about it. duplicate all that kind of stuff, or try to even break into it and hack into it, because oh, it, is like a, a it is a pretty tight system. It's the Fantastic. same... It's the same type of system that you have in your Apple phones. Mm -hmm. Apple Pay is NFC technology, which is an R, is, which is the cousin of RFID. Sure. RFID is the cousin of NFC. They both are one the same. Android mm -hmm. has NFC in it. So if you got an Android-based phone, <coughs> you have NFC in it. So that technology exists right now, and we're just leveraging it. That's fantastic. <coughs> Yep. Once again, uh, this didn't happen overnight. Nope. It's been a long road. And, uh, you know, not only you're committed to uh, the team here, but I was impressed that you gave a speech here. And that's how I started learning about Prova earlier today. I went to the site to check it out. But really, if I was going to pay my hard earned money or my family's hard earned money, and I'm going to go get Mr. Smith or the rest of the triplets up there. Right. Mm -hmm. Why would I want to bring it later on? I'd rather get it. So I'd rather get it authenticated right then and there. And the beautiful by the thing team. about it is, it's a database. Yes. Yeah, the beautiful thing is, <clears throat> you can walk around and do whatever you. Once you get up there. You ain't gonna bring a forgery up there. Right. Yeah. Because I'm the guy that's about to sign it. I better not see my yeah. name yeah. on something that I'm about to sign. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> and sure. if I do, I know something is wrong. Yeah, right? absolutely. But at the end of the day, we're just trying to equip fans with information uh, so they can make a much more informed decision in terms of how they spend their money, where they spend their money, how much they actually spend, and whether or not they are truly getting value from it. I mean, because that, I mean, some people say, well, I've seen it done. Uh, I'm never going to sell it. It's not even about you. God, if you was to get some wings and fly away, somebody next sitting in, in that seat may not want to, may not want it, may want to go sell it. Sure. And now they're going to have to deal with the after effects. Of course. The after effects of all of that. They're going to have to go to someone like the PSA DNAs and all sure. those <coughs> to get somebody to uh, actually validate whether or not the signature is real. Well, I think and you're going to have to pay $250. 
I think it's amazing that you started thinking about it during your career. Props <laughs> to you for being an entrepreneur even way back then. Right. Um, I did want to ask one question from our viewers mm -hmm. uh, that are live, and I'd like to maybe oh, take one question? question. Yeah, so they want to know about Zeke. They want to mm. know your thoughts on Zeke. Oh, you got me sitting right here. You want to ask me about Zeke? <laughs> Zeke I, is I fine. Why y'all worried about Zeke? No, no. Zeke? Zeke led the league in Russian last year. Why people are worried about Zeke? Who hit the hardest back in your day? That's a, that's a lame question. Who hit the hardest? You wouldn't know who she was anyway. Her name is Mary Smith. My mother. Not one man hit me that hard. I'm not going to give him credit anyway. Folks in the crowd, uh, maybe for one of the kids. Who has a question for Mr. Smith over here? Don't be shy. Thank you. Um, when did you think... Uh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you had a question. You had your mouth fixed like you wanted to say something. <laughs> Walter Payton. Wow, I didn't yep. even know that, and we just opened. That's his why I was hoping year. to get that rookie. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that'd have been really cool. Um, so I know we have just uh, probably a minute or so left. Please tell me about your charity work and your foundation. Well, my wife and I, uh, they have our own Pat and Emma Smith Charities, <clears throat> where we have selected 20 kids that we wanted to mentor personally ourselves, and we've been with these 20 kids since they were in the seventh grade. Wow. About 15 of them have already <clears throat> graduated and gone on off to college, that we help support them get, getting on off to college. So you changed their lives substantially. Well, the, we we had a part. <clears throat> they had a part. I'm you know, you said it like that. I mean, at the end of the day, we just, just extended a helping hand, and they extended it back. They took the oath, and they went forward with it, and they made it happen themselves. They had to put in a lot of work. So did we. Sure. But what we did... Uh, we wanted to uh, create unique experiences for these young people uh, by taking them out of their current environment, taking them to places like New York City or Washington, D.C., seeing the Big Apple, seeing what happens in the Big Apple, how big it really is, and sure. how things happen and move around. Take them to Broadway plays, take them to the World Trade Centers, because when these kids were little, the World Trade Center got hit. <clears throat> and so they grew up learning about it. Now they got a chance to go down there and see the memorial and everything else to see the new World Trade Center. Go up and and, 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 and what is it? World Tower One? Yes. <clears throat> go up there go up to the very top level and look around. They got a chance to go see plays like Wicked and other plays. Mm -hmm. They got a chance to go and visit with entrepreneurs who are running big major companies and sit down with CEOs and ask certain questions. Then we got a chance to take them to Washington DC and visit the White House and see they seen two presidents, President Bush and President Obama. And they got a chance to go to Congress and see how the Congress actually operates and work. So now these kids understand that <clears throat> things just does not happen. People make There's, things happen. Yep. And you just got to figure out how you fit in the world and get in there and become the most productive citizen that you can. And when you have a chance to influence something, you influence it in the most positive way that you can. Well, uh, those tr uh, words couldn't be any truer. And I want to give a shout out to uh, Julie Raskin and her son, Ben. Um, they run a website called congenitalhi.org, mm -hmm. and it's a, a particular rare condition that affects my son. Um, and uh, Julie is an amazing person because mm -hmm. when Ben was um, uh, diagnosed with this about 20 years ago, the medicine was not nearly as good it is, as it is uh, good today. Right. And so my son, who's four years old, his life has been forever changed and bettered, even though it's an extremely rare condition, mm -hmm. because Julie Raskin didn't give up on every other kid that came after her. Right. And so for that, I'm extremely thankful. Yeah, so. I get it. I get it. Somebody has always come before us and paid the way, shown us the way. Our job is to make it better and improve upon it. That's our job. Well, you're certainly improving upon the authentication business. Definitely really trying to that. anyway. Uh, I very much think that. And of course, um, what's the website so we can tell our fans? Well, Provagroup.com. Provagroup.com. Please check it out. Uh, Mr. Smith, thanks again for joining us today. This was awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, man. You didn't lose everything. Oh, Thank my goodness. You didn't lose everything. Wow. That was cool. Thank you, bro. That was cool. Enjoy that. Got to go back to work now. All right. Okay.